Statistics and Excel, hypothesis testing with a one-tail upper situation and the standard deviation of the population is known. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because... The fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You do have access three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. We're looking at hypothesis testing, where we have a one tail upper situation, which we will explain more shortly, and the standard deviation of the population is known. So we're gonna have a similar scenario in some ways to recent example problems or typical situation being, we wanna find information about a large population, but we can't test every item within the large population because it's too big, that would be too tedious. Therefore, we're gonna take a sample, we're gonna test the sample, hoping that we can apply the findings found from the sample to the characteristics of the larger population, two methods we typically think of, one, hypothesis testing, two confidence intervals, hypothesis testing lending itself to situations where we think we know what the middle point is, therefore constructing our graph around that middle point, and then seeing if the results we get from our sample are far enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis. Whereas with confidence intervals, it lends itself to situations where we don't know what the middle point is, and therefore the results we get from the test will be the middle point and will construct a confidence interval around that in some way, shape, or form. Now we're going to the hypothesis testing scenario in this case, imagining that we have a hypothesized uh, amount and we're constructing our graph around that. And in this situation, we could have what we might call an, a one tail upper, a one tail lower, and, uh, and, and have both the upper and lower kind of situation. So in our example, for example, we're imagining that there's a national mean of home prices, but in our current region, we think that the, that the average home price is higher than the national average, for example. In that case, we're not really worried about the lower bit down here. We're thinking, our hypo we're thinking that the, the original hypothesis that we will set is likely possibly to be incorrect on the upper tail side. And so that's what our focus is. All right, so that's the example. So what we're gonna be thinking about then is the home prices. So the scenario being the national mean, we're gonna just imagine, we're just making these numbers up, is 180,000. And we're gonna say, well, in our region, we think it's gonna be higher than that. So we're going to basically take a sample to, to uh, judge that. We'll basically actually make the entire population of data so that we know the behind the scenes information. And then we'll uh, get, get that information from the data that we created for the population. And then we'll get into the sample 
pulling our sample information from uh, the population and go through our hypothesis testing, focusing a little bit more on how we might set up our uh, hypothesis in a kind of a formal and somewhat shorthand type of way. All right, the practice tab has pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting the blank tab. That's where we're at. Let's lay down the foundation, formatting the cells, selecting the entire worksheet, right-clicking, format those cells. I'm going to go to the currency. I'm going to go to the negative numbers being bracketed and red. No dollar sign, no decimals to start off with. That's my baseline starting point typically. Okay, let's make it all bold. You don't need to make it bold possibly, but I think it's easier to see in a screen record. And I'm just going to put a header here, hypothesis testing. And I'm just going to put one tail upper and STD of the population is known. So that's the standard deviation of the population. Now, if we don't know what the standard deviation of the population is, then it's more likely that we might be using uh, T distributions, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so that's the general idea of it. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger and let's make this black and white for the header. Home tab, font group, let's make this black and white. All right. And so then I'm going to start using a little bit of formal kind of tools in Excel so you can kind of practice these. I want to put a mu, uh, which is going to be our hypothesis. So I'm going to go to the insert tab. I'm going to go to the symbols. And I already have it down here in mu, but it's in the Greek stuff. And you could find the mu once you click it a few times. You'll have it down here, so you might have to hunt for it for a while. I'm going to insert it and OK. Now, usually I like to hit Enter and then go back into it. Otherwise, the format gets messed up sometimes. Then I want to put a sub zero. So I'm going to put a zero here and then select it. Uh, actually, I'll put a zero and then I'm going to say equals. And then this is going to be the nation, national mean home cost national mean home cost. And then I'm going to go back in here and format that to make it a sub zero right clicking format the cell and I want to make it font a subscript. Okay, so a little fancy formatting there. And we'll say that this is going to be I'll make this a little larger. Uh, 180. I'm just making that up. So we're saying the national mean is 180. I'm going to imagine that that's kind of a given data for us. So I'm going to make that uh, orange. That's what's known in in universe, but it's a given uh, a given information. So we as the researcher believes that the mean for the area is larger than the na national mean. So we're thinking, hey, we're in an expensive area here. So the national mean is probably low uh, uh, compared to where we are at. That's our hypo that's our that's our hunch. So we're gonna so then we want to test that out. So I'm gonna make that uh, blue. And then so I'm gonna say, then we can ask then what's the null hypothesis? in sub zero, I'm going to call it for our formal language, the null, that'll be the null hypothesis. So that's going to be the standard hypothesis. I'm going to go back into this, select this one, make it a subscript again, right clicking on it, format cells, I'll make it a subscript, boom. And let's make that black and white, up top, black, white. So the, the null, we're going to say, I assume uh, national, national mean is true or applies to us, applies to us or our area, right? That's going to be our null. Now, notice that's not what we actually think because our, and this is how, this is what's a little bit counterintuitive about this process. We're saying, hey, it, we don't think this this is correct. Uh, the the mean of the area 
And therefore, our hunch is that the mean of our area is greater than the national mean, but we're going to assume the natural the national mean to be true in a similar way as you might think of a court case that we're going to assume someone is innocent until proven guilty, right? We're going to assume the national mean applies to all places within like the country, for example, uh, evenly. And then, and, and as that is the, and then we're going to see, I don't think that is actually true where I'm at. I think it's going to be larger, but that's going to be my baseline assumption that I'm going to either prove or disprove with evidence using a hypothesis testing method. And the evidence has to be, you know, somewhat overwhelming uh, for us to accept that the, the, the new alternative. So the alternative hypothesis Meaning, if this isn't true, this is what we probably actually think. I'll make this a subscript. Format cells, let's make that a subscript. And I'll make this black and white. Duh, duh, black, white. Is is that conclusion, uh, if the null hypothesis uh, is rejected, which is that if we reject the null hypothesis, we assume that the, the price is higher on average in our region. That's gonna be the idea. All right, so let's make a skinny C and let's actually make the population data. This is the behind the scenes stuff that in universe they don't know, but I wanna have, I wanna build the actual population data so that we have an idea of it so that when we take the sample, we get an idea of the sample compared to the population. So I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine it's actually 190,000. So it is actually larger in our region than the national average. But we don't know that yet. That's our hunch. But it is actually true based on this data. One three three zero. Oh, hold on, I'm missing a zero here. It should be we're saying it's gonna be 13,300. I'm gonna make this red and white because this is information not known in universe. This is the behind the scenes information. Let's do it this way. Selecting the drop down red. I'm gonna make this white and then put some brackets around it. Using that then to create our random number generation for the population. I'm gonna make a skinny column. I'm gonna take this skinny C home tab format painter skinny F. And then I'm gonna make a random number generation using, let's make this black and white first, home tab, font group, header, black, white, alignment, center, putting the data right here, going to the data tab up top. I have the analysis tool turned on. If you don't have that turned on, you can turn it on. Possibly looking up, I'm thinking more in the AI tools, the, the AI like chat GTP is a good place to go. I've been using that more for instructions like this and it finds it pretty well. I'm gonna go to the random number generation here. We'll say, okay. And then I'm gonna say that we want one. I want number of random numbers. I'm gonna put 500 of them. It's gonna be a normal type of distribution, meaning it's gonna be somewhat like a bell shaped curve. The 190,000 is the population mean, and then 13,300. So make sure I get the extra zero in there because I messed that up before. And then I'm gonna put that in the location, which is gonna be right there, boom, right there. Might take a little bit of time for it to uh, generate it, but should be able to crank that out with no problem. All right, so now I'm just gonna format this. It messed up the formatting. Right click on the data. I'm just gonna go ahead and format it like our normal formatting, uh, which is currency, no dollar sign, no decimals. And then, okay, I'll make it bold, home tab, bold. And then I'm gonna make it red and white, bordered, red, white because this is the behind the scenes data let's take a look at a histogram of it while we're highlighted here insert making a chart a histogram and we'll just crank one of those out and you can see it populated the data around basically that center point in somewhat of a bell-shaped type of curve which is kind of what you would expect for uh, the population data however we're still going to be using the concept that that even if it wasn't bell-shaped due to the central limit theorem we could still use 
the bell-shaped uh, type of, of curve is the general idea that we're still kind of uh, applying here. So I'm gonna then select the F to make another skinny over here. I'm gonna make a format paint skinny H. I'm just gonna recap the data, the actual data now that we're gonna assume is from here. This is our population data, not known in universe, but let's see what we know about it behind the scenes. The population count should be 500 because we made 500 of them. Let's double check it equals count tab. This data, control shift down, control backspace, there it is count those numbers enter 500 the mean of the population population is mean equals the average tab of the population control shift down control backspace there's our formula it should be around 190,000. it's at 189 555 that's interesting all right so then we have this std of the population standard deviation of the population should be around 13300 let's see what we actually have std of the p and control shift down control backspace there's that information and enter 13 7 uh 17. So this is the actual data that we're going to use about this being the actual full population that we are now going to take a sample of. I'm going to make this bit black or I'm sorry, red bordered and white. And this one I'm going to make orange because we're imagining we do know this basically in universe. We're imagining we know the standard deviation for whatever reason. We just don't know the, uh, uh, we, we we don't know the the mean of our per, our particular location so that's going to be our idea so we're going to then say and if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population we can approximate it with that of the sample standard deviation of the sample and then we might have to use t distributions as opposed to normal distributions which are typically uh, going to have a little bit fatter of the tails all right so let's make a skinny h we'll do that later by the way home tab format paint we'll make a skinny h over here now we're going to take our sample so this is all that is known in universe we're going to take the sample of our data and we're going to say D -d -d -d, make this black and white now the sample uh we could do this a couple different ways i could make random numbers next to this and shuffle this up like a deck of cards i could just pick the numbers from here because they were randomly generated but let's just actually pick random numbers using our index function. So it's gonna be equals index tab of this column, control shift down, control backspace, comma, and then we wanna pick random numbers, rand between. In this case, between, oh man, rand capasso between. Uh, and then hold on a second, let me do it again. Rand between, here's the one. And we want to be between the bottom and the top in rows. So this is row number one. This is row number one of the worksheet. Row number one is here of the columns that we're looking at. One comma, and there's 500 of them. So the last row is number 500. Close that, enter. And so there we have it. Now I'm going to double click on it because I have to make some absolute, absolute references. Absolute reference this. And so there we have that. And so that there's gonna be our first random number. Now, how many of these random, we're gonna imagine like we have 36 of these. Let me pull this to the right. I'm gonna select these two and just drag it over to the right so I can put a count here. So I can count my numbers to count out 36 of them that we're gonna be using. And so I'm just gonna say one, two, and select those two. And we're gonna say that we sampled down to 36 36 okay and let's make that actually black and white and then we'll double click this to center that and then i could just double click this down boom so that's going to be our samples all right so then i'll make that one bordered and this time blue if you don't have that blue it's over here by the way i've been using it before so but there it is okay so that so because that's what we know in universe and we're going to use that to test our hypothesis so let's restate our hypothesis like symbolically now i'm going to select k here home tab format paint paint brushy that right there to make a skinny n and then i'm going to say okay let's 
we're gonna say the H sub zero colon, and then I'm gonna say mu, which is the mean. I'm using letters now, getting fancy with the letters. Insert, we're gonna say symbols, and I'm using that mu, which is in here, you have to search for it first, but then it'll be in recent, insert, and then okay. And then I'm gonna go back into that sub O, right click on it, and format the cells to make it a sub script. And that's how you make that fancy subscript. So that stands for the the null hypothesis is that we have uh, mu is less than or equal to tab 180,000. We're gonna say equals, we had that over here, the national. That's That's what we're trying to, we don't think that's true, but with that's the null hypothesis that we're going to start with and see if we are correct to disprove that in a similar way as you might do in a, like a criminal court case to provide the evidence to say that that is not the case all right so then we have this one insert and i have two of them and then i'll make this another subscript checking that right click and then format making it a subscript all right, the alternative hypothesis then, of course, uh, would simply be that this is greater than the 100. I'm just going to say equals the one above it. And so I can center these maybe home tab center. So that's why it's a one tail test, because we're saying that it's going to be less than or equal to 180. Our assumption is that it is greater. That means it's only on one side. We're just looking at one tail of the graph on the right hand side. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because we don't need it to be that large. And then let's make this blue right click. I'll make this blue and bordered again. And then I'm going to say that a, which is going to stand for alpha is going to be uh, 0.05. So we're going to, that's our standard 0.05 with the 95 percent versus the 0.05 now we have to be careful though this time because when i say 0.05 if i look over here you will recall normally we default and say well the point in the middle if it was two standard deviations away is like 95 percent and then you got like five percent on the tails but if i say i'm looking at five percent here there's only one tail so and so this tail is going to be a, a full five percent instead of half of five percent 2.5 if it was like a two-tailed situation so let's go back on over i'm going to add some decimals or i could percentify it and so let's just do that and let's make us another skinny r now i'm going to make a skinny take the skinny in format paint to a skinny r and then i'm going to take the x bar which is the mean of the sample now so the mean of the sample i'll double click on this and say this is going to be equal to the average of the sample average of the sample control shift down control backspace just the average of our sample enter let's pull this over i don't know why i put it in u i should have put it in t i'll just pull that okay i'll put it up here okay there it is mean of the sample and then s is going to be equals to the std of the sample so i'm just going to calculate the standard deviation of the sample which could approximate the standard deviation of the population, but which is not what we're actually kind of looking for when we do our bell curve, even though the data is kind of in a bell curve shape in this case, because we're going to be thinking about the standard deviation of every sample size using the standard error calculation. So I'll just show you this number. This is going to be, but we might not use we're standard deviation of the sample is going to be this control shift down control backspace. There it is, enter, comes out something similar to the STD of the population, standard deviation of the population, but may not be as exact, especially if the sample is not uh, that large, right? So if we didn't know the standard deviation of the population, that's why sometimes we might not use the normal distribution, but rather T distributions, but we're assuming we do know the standard deviation of the population, which is this number over here. All right. So then we're going to take then n is going to be equal to the sample size. And so we're going to say this equals the count of the samples. And how many? 36 we did, I think. 
36 of those. So that's how big our sample is. And SE is what we're gonna say stands for the standard error. Now this is gonna be basically the standard deviation that we're going to use to create the bell curve. Remembering we have the standard deviation of the population. We have the standard deviation of the sample, which might not approximate a bell curve. In this case, the data does kind of approximate a bell curve, but if it didn't, we still could basically use the central limit theorem looking for the standard deviation of all possible combinations of whatever sample size we're using. In this case, 36 out of the population of uh, 500, which we're approximating with our formula. And, and the formula, I don't have it here, but it's our, it's our normal kind of formula. I should have copied over the formula, but it's our normal formula, which is gonna be equal to the standard deviation of the population, if it was known, divided by the square root, the square SQ, the square root of N, which in this case is 36. So that's gonna be our, our standard error, which is basically the standard deviation uh, that we will use. So now we can look at our, we can call this the, the, uh, the Z, which is gonna be equal to the test statistic for us. So we're gonna look, we can look at this in terms of our Z, which measures in terms of the uh, standard deviation. So remember our idea here is that we're building, we're gonna construct our graph around the, 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 the mean under the, the hypothesis, the 180. And, and so, we, so we're thinking about basically, that's how we're constructing the graph. We're not constructing the graph on the middle point of the sample that we took, right? And then the sample is gonna be, we're gonna see how far away it is from uh, the middle point. So let's take this Z that we're comparing to this middle point over here in terms of standard deviations is gonna be equal to brackets. It's gonna be this number minus the middle point that is our hypothesis divided by then the, uh, hold on a sec, I didn't divide it. I have to divide it by the standard error, boom. And that's gonna give us four about, I'm gonna add some decimals. So let's give, let's add a couple more. Let's get some good, a number of decimals behind that one. All right, so given that data, I'm gonna put this one down here. We can calculate our P value, which is basically going to be the information under the curve up to the right past this point on the Z, which we can calculate this way. Now, if I do it this way, first, let's take a look at this. If I say norm.s.dist, and I was to calculate it there, it just wants the Z. So now this is our Z measuring it in Z's and then comma, do we want it to be cumulative? In this case we do, cause we're measuring up from left to right and then enter. Now that's gonna give us, if I add some decimals, something close to one, but I don't, what I want is the area, not of this side, but of this side. So I wanna take one minus that. So I'm gonna go back into it and say before this bit, I wanna say one minus this, and this should give us the area of the outer side, which is quite small. So we're gonna, let's add a few decimals. So, so there we have it. So it's over in standard deviations, 3.89 and so on and so forth, which is way out to the right when we measure in terms of standard deviations, which means the area here is going to be uh, quite small. And so if this is small, then we're going, if it's smaller than the alpha, that's when we're going to uh, reject it. So let's say, let's do a formula for that just to give us a little test over here and say, if brackets, uh, this number is less than this number, then what do we want you to do? I want you to quote, we'll say reject end quote, because it's a text and then comma. What do you want us to do if it's not true? Quotes, no reject, end quotes. So it'll give us a little logic test. So it's been rejected. And then I could say, well, let's say if it's rejected, I'll even go further and go home tab, style, format, paint, and say if this equals uh, reject, we're gonna make it red. Right, let's make it red. Boom. 
So we could see that. And then we could also calculate then the uh, critical value, we'll call it critical, critical value. So this is the value in terms of Z's that we'd have to be greater than calculating this by saying we're, we're going to take the norm dot S and inverse. And I'm looking at this probability, the 5%. So that's the area under the curve on the right side. If I look at the Z scores to get there, that's what we're trying to get at. Now, if I add some decimals, no, it's negative. That would mean it's on the left-hand side. I want to get to the right-hand side. So I'm going to go into that again. And in here, I'm going to say this is going to be one minus that, which will make it the positive number. So that's basically in Z's, the point that we would need to clear to be above this bit so that we're, we have just the amount that's going to be in, under the area here, which is like the 5%, which is the rejection area, right? This is the blue bit is where we would have to be in order to not reject it. If we passed out here in terms of Z's, we'd have to pass this bit to be into the reject area. So we can do it. We could do our same kind of test here and say, okay, well, if, if this number then is less than this number, then we're going to uh, reject it. Meaning this is the Z score that our mean came out with and it's past the point to the right hand side, which means it's past this area uh, over here. So that would mean that we it would be over here somewhere. So we would reject it. Let's put a logic function in here and we can say, well, if, and then uh, equals if, equals if tab, if this number is less than this number, then quotes reject in quotes. If not, comma, quotes not uh, reject in quotes, enter, rejects it. And then I can say, let's do the format painting and I'll just copy the format here paste it there so that it gives us uh, the format. All right. So then we could then say that it has been rejected. Now let's make a graph of this. I'm going to go up top and make this blue bordered. I'll make this uh, border blue and I'll make this border blue. And then I'll put some borders around this and this. Now I'm going to use my, my newer method for graphing so that I start with my Z's. So I'm gonna select this column, paintbrush that over here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be my Z's and I'm just gonna go from negative four because four standard deviations will account for most of the data, almost all of it, almost 100% of the curve and then 3.99 and so on. This should be negative 3.99 and I'm gonna cop, I'm gonna format paint that uh, or add some decimals then bring that down until I get to positive four. Positive four. So we're going to have a very detailed graph. And da, 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 right there. And then I'll go back on up. So that's the Z. If that's the Z's, then I can get to my X by saying that the X, that shows me how many distance away from the middle point in terms of standard deviations or Z. The middle point is this bit because we're talking, we're building the graph around the hypothesis. So this is going to then be uh, the middle point, And I'm going to say plus the negative number. So which is basically going to be minus that times. And we're going to convert that into basically the uh, standard deviations in X's, which is the standard error number and enter. So there we have it. I'm going to go back into it. Anything that's not in column W needs to be absolute because I'm going to then copy this down. That means Q1 F4 dollar sign before the Q and the one T4 F4 dollar sign before the T and the four enter. Then I can put my cursor back on it, double click it down and then I'll control shift down. Looks like it did what we thought it should do. Once we have that, I could take P of X to calculate the area for each of these. So I'm going to say this equals our good old norm dot dist. And the X is now going to be that. The mean is going to be not this mean, not the mean of the sample. We're building it around the hypothesis. 
the 180 F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the Q and the one. So make it absolute standard deviation, not of the population, not of the uh, sample. We want the standard deviation of or the standard error F4 on the keyboard and then column comma. And this needs to be zero and enter. So then I'm going to percentify that to recognize add some decimals and then just copy that down uh double clicking on the fill handle and then i'll go i'll go page down and see if this so there it starts to populate here let's add some more uh decimals so to well oh, add some hold on a second selecting this percentify adding some more decimals so that add one more and then if I page down, choo -choo 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 -choo. so there we have it. Okay. Okay. I think that looks okay. It looks proper. Let's graph it and see if it looks correct on the graph. So now I'm going to go over here, control shift down, whoop, control shift down, control backspace, insert. Now I'm not going to do this one. We could, we could do that. That looks about right. We could do this one, but I'm but I'm gonna do the area. So we'll go boom, more graphs, all charts, area graph, that's the one. All right, and let's just do our standard graphing thing. So I'm gonna get rid of the title. I'm gonna go into the data and we're gonna add the X's and I want them to be here. Control shift down, control backspace, select in here and then back until it populates properly, which I can see by the little dots and okay. And okay, now I have my X's. I can also put a, a Z down here because I can measure this in X's or Z's. To do that though, I need another set of data. So I'm gonna put the data that is up above the critical uh, value. So the critical value is in terms of Z scores. So what I'm gonna do is say, this is gonna be equal to Z greater than this number, which I'd like to make a text so I'm going to make a, a quotes around this and this for text and then and to tie it together to give me a dynamic text, but it's got too many decimals. So I'm going to double click on this again and round this tab to comma three decimals. And there we have it. All right. So then let's make this black, white centered. And then let's do this calculation here is going to be, I want to say this is going to be equal if there's only one condition now, so I don't need an and, and I'm going to say this Z has to be when that is greater than this number, then what do you want us to do? Comma, I want you to give me uh, this P of X comma. What if it's not, then I want you to leave it blank quote space quote to put a blank space there and enter and then i'm going to say percent add decimals four of them <laughs> double click it down and then control shift down or let's just wait a sec i don't think i did that right there's something wrong here because this one needs to be uh absolutized let's go back in here f4 on the keyboard there we go. So then I'm going to copy it down again, copy it down and then control shift down. So there it is. It's populating down there. Okay. So now I can add that data going into here, chart design data, add another data. This is going to be the name of it. And we're going to select this range control shift down and select here and then back okay there it is boom so then i'm going to go back up so we've got the the second bit of data i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to say secondary when i do that it messes it up because it puts it over here i don't want that get rid of that and then i'm going to say data on the secondary this data I want to be the Z's control shift down control backspace select here and then back until it populates and then okay and okay 
and then I want to say add axis secondary axis which it puts it on top I want it on the bottom more selecting this one to pick the bottom put it on the bottom por favor low bring it low it's it's not doing it but I just need to click around a bit because it's too much information all right there we have it now I could make this a little smaller until I can still see the data in the chart and make this chart like pretty large now so that it gives me the most information on these axes has some more room on those axes and then I can say insert let's do like a a line so I can then say okay does this make sense this thing uh, let's check it out and say okay let's make this the center point of this should be based on the hypothesized information 190 uh, and have a z of zero so the z down here is zero and it's at around 100 and uh 100 and no that's not what i want that's wrong the hypothesis was 180 should be around 180 that's correct all right and then this point over here is going to be our hurdle limit that we basically have to clear uh in order to reject it which in terms of p's is at uh i'm sorry in terms of critical value in z's is at 1.645 so this would be at 1.64 so that's the critical value would have to increase which in terms of x's is about 183,000 and our the mean that we came up with was 186 100 this was 183 this was 186 which is way out here and is clearly uh in the range that we would reject it because it's pretty far away from that middle point so we would reject the original hypothesis uh would be the general idea okay in terms of z's by the way the we we, we were out here if we measure that in z's it should be 2.68 and so it's like way out here two point six eight or something uh so it looks about right our graph looks about right so that's going to be the idea only one tail notice we weren't concerned we weren't we had no assumptions that we were in an area that it's going to be on this side that we're going to be low that's why it's a one tail uh to the right test that we were looking at and we're saying yeah it looks like based on our data that we can reject the hypothesis based on this and say say it that uh, the actual mean is above that in our area. And so I'm going to say, let's bracket this and make it uh, blue. And that's the, that's the general, that's the general idea. Okay.